was their recent paper. Kaim and his students wrote it. And it was about how BT cotton and GMOs are liberating women. Now, I defend women's right to save seed, and we fight GMOs because we see GMOs as not just enslaving women, but displacing women from their skills of seed saving seeds, their skills of knowing how to grow different crops together and protect biodiversity, how to grow cotton as well as other food crops. Monsanto's argument in this paper is women suffered from femi-manual work. Femi-manual work. Now they go to the field and pick cotton, which somehow is not femi-manual anymore, cotton picking. I mean, if you think of all the stories of slaves in America, cotton picking wasn't the best thing you did. And they then say, and because women are now going to the field, the men are cooking and looking after the children. So I had to do a response to say, no, the men are dead. And these women are widows. 4,600 in the area with the largest spread of BT cotton, which is the heartland of India, the area where, where cotton evolved in India. Well, in 2003, the US was starting to fed, get fed up with the strength of the European movement. And Monsanto went to President Bush and said, sue these guys in WTO. So they brought a case. And you might remember we created a citizen's response we created a citizen's campaign against the WTO. And Jose Bove and I and Susan George gave these millions of signatures to the WTO in the Hong Kong ministerial. When they realized there's so many people who are watching, they did not dare rule against Europe. It was a very wishy-washy ruling. It could go this way, it could be interpreted that way. 2010 is the year they think if we don't push everything this year, the evidence is too strong that the technology is failing, the science is too strong that the costs are too high, and the people's love for their freedom is too strong. So 2010, they want to push the GM salmon. In India, they tried to push the BT eggplant. And there was such an outrage across the country, from the scientific community, from farmers. The environment minister was forced to hold public hearings across the country. I don't think any vegetable has had public hearings dedicated to it before. But the humble little eggplant had pu public hearings across the country. We have 4,000 varieties of eggplant. Every part of the country cooks it differently. And the public hearings made the environment minister realized the people were not for it and he has announced a moratorium. But of course the next day a law comes and Benny was with us. We were celebrating 20 years of the GMO free movement. And the next year a law is introduced, a draft law is introduced. It's called the Biotechnology Regulatory Authority of India. We have a law under the Environment Protection Act. We have rules called the Rules for Genetic Engineering. It's not that we don't have a law. And we use these laws. When Monsanto came in illegally in 1998, just walked in and started to uh, experiment, started to put ads to say, farmers are going to be buying Bolgar. We sued them. They were prevented from introducing commercial sales till 2002. By then, they managed to bribe a few officials here and there. I remember when I filed the case, I even got a call. And since I'm not as smart as the young people, I didn't have a recorder on my phone. Because they said, how much will you take to withdraw this case? And I just told the officer, how could you even dare to talk this language with me? You know it won't work. So this year, they've approved the useless amphora. Useless. It's useless because it's not for food, and they keep saying it's about solving hunger. Useless because the people in the starch industry say that we don't want it. So for whom are they doing it? They're doing it as a Trojan horse, so that next they'll start food crops. And I think we all need to put our weight behind reversing the amphora approval and ensuring that it doesn't grow anywhere, ensuring it doesn't become part of the agricultural system. 
we also know we are going to be faced with the fact that now Monsanto realizes that they've got to bring farmers in front. And they're finding farmers everywhere who say they're, they're going to benefit. And that's why we need very, very strong responses from farm unions, from farm organizations. We've got Christoph here, whose mobilization in Rosenheim changed the decision on the MON810. And we need much more of that. We need much more of civil courage, because that's what's going to take. We are going to see more and more laws used to silence us. And Gandhi told us that when law becomes unlawful, when law becomes unjust, when law becomes brutal, then you have to have the civil courage to not obey unjust law. He called it Satyagre, which means the force of truth. We, in our times, are the movement that has to defend the truth. The truth about the beauty and resilience of our biodiversity. The truth about the fact that we have ecological systems that produce much more. We have Hans Herren with, here with us, who's, who with other scientists produced the report, the international assessment that shows ecological agriculture is the only road to food security, not GMOs and not chemical farming. We have all of this evidence. We now have to stand behind it. And most importantly, we have to stand behind our resolute commitment and determination to freedom. The more Monsanto tries to terrorize one of us, we must all be together to say, we are defenders of our food freedom, we are defenders of our seed sovereignty, we are defenders of our food sovereignty, and we have successfully kept them at bay for 20 years. Compared to what their vision was, all GM, all patents, most of our food in most of our countries is GMO free. Let's keep it that way and reverse the pollution, contamination, corruption they have introduced wherever they have. I know the future is in our hands, not in the lives of Monsanto. Thank you. the citizens of Switzerland said no we don't want this stuff they've got a referendum and a moratorium so like you said this hall represents citizen power we have so many examples and we need to celebrate every one of them and I have come rushing with greetings from the other Nobel laureates uh, alternative Nobel laureates to honor you all because each of you is so very special <laughs>